In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my Frost Knight build, which is a tanky warrior build that can cast a few spells and does incredible damage in melee and at range. The weapon that I chose for this build is Clayman's Harpoon, and there are a couple reasons for that. First, it does both physical and magic damage, and we need lots of magic damage for this build because we have things that buff magic damage. Additionally, you can slot whatever Ashivore you want on it. I think this might be the only or one of the only weapons in the game that has physical and magic damage on it that allows you to change the Ash of War. And lastly, if you don't choose either cold or magic damage, you can also buff this with something like Scholar's Armaments if that's something you want to do as well, further increasing the magic damage. The Ash of War that I chose for this build is Ice Spear, and that's because it does incredible magic damage at range, and it helps build up the Frostbite status effect, and it simply outperforms Glinstone Ice Crag. I originally, I had started wanting to use Frost spells for this build, but this Ash of War actually outperforms that spell so much there became no need to ever use that spell, so that's kind of why I went with it. Additionally, you can set the cold or magic affinities when you use this to further increase magic damage and also, you know, provide frost buildup when you're attacking with it regularly or doing, you know, jump attacks or something like that. Or you can put it on, like, heavy scaling. It has pretty good strength scaling if you go that route, and then you can buff it with Scholar's Armaments. So you can go any of those three directions, but I went with cold generally, and then sometimes I'll swap out cold for magic if I'm fighting something that can't be affected by Frostbite. The shield that I use for this build is the Carrion Knight shield, and that's because it has an intelligence requirement, so it fits this build nicely. It doesn't have very high or strength dexterity requirements, and has excellent magic damage mitigation. One of the things with this build is that we actually buff our shield to further give us more resistances, and you can get damn near 100% magic damage mitigation with this shield, meaning you can just block magic attacks like they are nothing, which is great. Additionally, if you outfit this thing with carry and retaliation, it hits like an absolute freight train. So if you want to do that, you absolutely can. The staff that I use for this build is the carry and glint blade staff, and that's because I use magic glint blade and great bleed phalanx with this build. This staff can be kind of whatever you want. Whatever spells you want to go at with this build, you can use a staff that will benefit that type. It's not super important for this build because you don't use magic a ton except to really buff yourself because this is more of a melee build that uses Ice Spear at range instead of spells. I use the Hyma Glintstone Crown for this build for my helmet. That's in order to get a couple strength and a couple of intelligence. Cost me some FP, but that's not that big of a deal. If you're using the Brass Shield, then this will help you meet those requirements. Um, but the strength also contributes to your melee damage as well, so that's not bad, as well as your ability damage, so that's good. And obviously intelligence does the same and contributes to spell damage if you're using spells. The rest of the pieces are the Cuckoo Knight set, so if you use the chest, legs, and gloves for this, you'll look just like me if you use that helmet. The four talismans I use for this build are Magic Scorpion Charb, Carrion Filigreed Crest, Great Shield Talisman, and Curved Sword Talisman. The Magic Scorpion Charm simply increases your damage, your magic damage, by about 10% in exchange for taking more damage. We deal a lot of magic damage with this build, and your weapon is mostly magic damage, so it benefits greatly from this, as well as your spells. So this is just a fantastic pickup here. Carrion Filigreed Crest is there to reduce the cost of Ice Spear from 15 FP to 12 FP. You absolutely spam this when you're running around on the landscape and in boss fights, so reducing the cost is going to save you quite a bit of FP. Later in the game, when you have higher mind, you'll probably want to replace this with like Alexander's Shard or something like that to further increase Ice Shard. But right now, where we don't have as much FP as we want and we don't have access to that because that's kind of an end game thing, we're going to run this. The Great Shield Talisman is there to give you an extra 10% guard boost to your shield. The Carrion Knight Shield maxes out at 60 guard boost, so that's going to be 6 extra guard boost, putting you at 66. And when you use Scholar's Shield, you'll get an extra 25%, although that's calculated before that extra 6. So that's going to add 15 to the guard boost. So that's like, if I do my math right, 81 guard boost when you're fully buffed up, which is fantastic. That's like Great Shield level, but you're using a shield that has like a 12 or 10 strength requirement. Now, you don't have to use this shield. I like this shield again because of the magic damage. So you could use, like, the Brass Shield if you wanted to put a couple more points into Strength to get even better Guard Boost out of it. But that's totally a personal decision, and that's up to you. The Curved Sword Talisman is there for block counters. Obviously, with this kind of Guard Boost, you're going to be blocking on and off, and getting those Guard Counters gives you a lot of damage with this. It gives you extra 20% damage. And one of the great things about this build is that Ice Spear does a lot of stagger damage. So if you hit something a couple times with an Ice Spear and then it comes up to you and you block and do a block counter, you usually stagger it immediately, and then you get that critical attack and things go down real easy. 
I actually first tried a lot of bosses with this build that I normally take a couple times for my videos to get to get the hang of how the build plays with it. But this time it was just, I just rolled everything. It was so smooth and getting those staggers was really good. There are other talismans that benefit this build as well. There's no shortage of good talismans. You could use the green turtle talisman to give you more stamina regen because you are blocking a lot with this build. You could use the ritual sword talisman to give you an extra 10% damage when you're at max health. I'm playing a melee build, so I didn't put it in here, but that is also an option. The spear talisman is also not a bad choice because that'll give you extra damage a lot of times when you're attacking with your spear when enemies are like mid attack animation. And because you can block with your shield and attack at the same time, that will happen sometimes with this build increasing your damage by about 10 to 15%. It's kind of hard to justify that in this build because it's not as good as some other ones. But nonetheless, if you find yourself blocking more than using Ice Spear, it's there if you want it. So really, the only two spells you need for this build are Scholar's Shield and Terra Magica. Scholar's Shield increases the resistances of your shield as well as adds guard boost to it, as I mentioned a minute ago, and it lasts for about a minute. So it's a really good replacement for Barricade Shield if you're playing an int build, which is why we slot it here. It has a very long cast time, so it's very situational. You'll obviously use this before going into a boss fight, but it might be hard to pull off again during a boss fight, so just keep that in mind. Terra Magica is also very situational. You can cast this outside of a boss fog and then walk through and stand there and spam Ice Spear for extra damage, or your regular attacks will deal extra damage while you're standing in it. Works better in co-op, in my opinion, where you can put it down in the middle of a boss fight and just kind of hang out there. One of the great things about this build is that you are really tanky when you have Scholar Shield up on your shield, so you should be able to stay inside that area and fight a boss. Like if you're just like blocking his attacks because you have so much guard boost and you're just attacking him, staying in that area, you're going to boost your damage significantly because most of your weapon damage is magic damage. I also like to use Magic Glint Blade for this build. This gives me like a staple ranged option that has a bit more range than Ice Spear. Ice Spear's range is a, like mid-tier, so it's not going to hit something like really far away. And Magic Limp Blade, I find, does that. I also have Carrion Phalanx here. This is not super useful because it costs so much FP. You'll probably use this more at endgame. But what it's really good for is Stagger. If you can throw this up before fighting an enemy and then Ice Spear them and hit them with this at the same time, you almost always Stagger them. Or if you hit them with one Ice Spear immediately afterwards, you'll Stagger them. It's really there to build up stagger faster in scenarios where you have time to prep, like you see a tough enemy coming, or you know you're going to run into him in a second, you can buff up that, and then cast Ice Spear and hit with it at exactly the same time to deal incredible stagger damage. Any other spells you want for this build are completely up to you. As I mentioned, the Glenstone Ice Crag just didn't do anything compared to the Ice Spear, which is why I didn't use it. And the Adula's Moonlight Blade is another one you can add to this build to have some sort of AoE, but I don't have it slotted here. So generally the way this build works is that you're going to run around the landscaper and dungeons, etc. using Ice Spear to one-shot most enemies. Difficult enemies, you're going to soften them up with Ice Spear, and then when they get to you, you're going to block counter to stagger them or finish them off, and that's that. In order to do this effectively, I like to keep no skill in my offhand on my shield, but you can use Carry and Retaliation if you want, because when an enemy casts a projectile at you, if you parry it and catch it, the damage from this is absolutely staggering. Like, you can one-shot bosses if you can step, grab their projectile and fling it back at them. I think it's probably going to be nerfed because the damage is so high. Additionally, one of the things that you can do is use Wraith Calling Bell to create a projectile and then use Carry and Retaliation instantly in order to throw up the projectiles over you and then just walk towards a boss and hit them for staggering damage. It's something you can do if you want. I do think that this is probably an oversight and will probably get patched, but I certainly wanted to mention it here in case you want to do it because it is OP as hell. The stats we have for this build are 40 Vigor, 25 Mind, 17 Endurance, 14 Strength, 12 Dexterity, 52 Intelligence, 14 Faith, and 9 Arcane. 40 Vigor is there because you are in melee range constantly with this build, and you're going to get hit, especially when you're using your um, Ice Spear in close range sometimes in order to just spam it. And you can probably get away with 35 here because you do have kind of a tanky setup, but 40 is better in my opinion. 25 Mind is there because you're going to spam Ice Spear. You also lose a little bit of FP because of that helmet that we're using and it's just a good amount. You don't cast a lot of spells with this build, so it's just Ice Spear most of the time, and it's only 12 FP, usually a one-shot per cast, which isn't terrible. If you want to take out five points from Vigor and put them in mind, then that wouldn't hurt. You could probably do that, no problem. 17 Durance is there because that's the exact quip load that we need in order to stay under the 70% threshold for medium roll for this build. I've tested it to the number, so if you want to use this exact setup for armor and weapons, then 17 Endurance is all you need. 
14 strength is mostly there because of the class that I chose at the beginning of the game, and two points are from the helmet. This doesn't need to be this high. However, if you do get it to 16 strength, you can use the Brass Shield for this build, which does have better guard boost, just has worse magic protection, so that's kind of a personal choice. 12 dexterity, again, is just because of the class. We don't need dexterity for this build. 72 intelligence is there in order to increase the damage we do with our weapon, as well as Ice Spear, because it scales off intelligence. And also because uh, it increases spell damage, so any spells that we deal are going to increase because of intelligence, so the more the merrier. If you do end up going for the Cold Affinity with this build, which is what I do, you'll notice that you get C scaling in intelligence and C scaling in strength. So eventually the damage from intelligence will probably drop off and you'll want to increase strength in order to increase your physical damage. That also increases Ice Spear's damage as well. So keep in mind that if you're advancing this build forward, you'll probably start putting points into strength in order to help increase your damage. And that should allow you to swap over to like a better shield as well. If you don't want to use carry and retaliation, you could get a great shield with better strength. That'll help you get that guard boost even higher. You might even get up to 100 guard boost, making it so that you don't take any stamina damage while blocking while you have Scholar's Shield up. 14 Faith is simply there because of the class that I am. You don't really need Faith at all, and same goes for Arcane, so please disregard those numbers. If you pick like a more magic-oriented class at the beginning of the game, your stat spread will look a lot better than mine does. And just one last tip before I wrap up this video. If you're going to be going into a boss fight or a tough area, you're going to want to use your Flask of Wonders Physique. And you're going to want to use the Magic Shrouding tier there to increase your magic damage, as well as the Stone Barbed Crack tier, because this is going to increase your posture damage, and Ice Spear does incredible posture damage, and it can actually reduce the amount of hits it needs with Ice Spear to stagger a boss from like 3 to 2 or 4 to 3, which is significant. So make sure you use these, and it'll make boss fights a lot easier for you.